Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and Nvidia have just shaken up the PC gaming world. You've probably heard it, but they've just announced the new RTX 3000 series of graphics cards. I don't have them with me right now. Full tests and reviews and buying guides are coming soon. But for this video, let's look at what's new and if they are actually worth getting excited about. So based on Nvidia's super fancy new Ampere architecture, we're getting three new graphics cards to start. At the top, we have the ludicrously over the top RTX 3090, which is just an absolute beast in terms of size, performance, and of course price, starting at $1,500. They're even calling it the BFGPU, which probably doesn't stand for big graphics processing unit, but who knows. But the 3090 gets a whopping 24 gigs of GDDR6 memory, a three slot design, and Nvidia says it's up to 50% faster than the current Titan RTX. This really is the money no object, I want to play 8K and show off kind of card. But I think for most of us, it's gonna be the new RTX 3080 that's the more realistic flagship. Firstly, it's not as bloody huge as the 3090, so you'll probably be able to fit this in a mini RTX PC as well, but it's still incredibly fast. According to Nvidia, the 3080 will offer up to two times the performance of the current RTX 2080. Obviously, I'll have to test this myself, but if these claims were even close to being true, this is a proper generational shift in graphics performance. And not only that, but it's gonna cost the same as the current 2080 at around $700. So if you have just bought a 2080, then maybe have a look for that receipt. But this card is aimed at high refresh 1440p or even 4K 60 monitors. And finally, we have the RTX 3070. This is probably gonna be the most popular card as it costs $500 and yet Nvidia say will give you about the same performance as the current 2080 Ti, which is a $1,200 card and is aimed at high refresh 1080p or even maybe 1440p 120 monitors. So first impressions, this is pretty crazy actually. I mean, Nvidia are talking about up to double the performance and almost double the power efficiency over previous Turing cards. And I know a lot of you guys have been holding out to see what these new cards would be like. I even made a video a couple of months ago saying don't buy a new graphics card. And I think, well, at least first impressions, looking at the specs and what Nvidia are claiming, it was definitely worth the wait. And also I think a lot of people are still holding out with Pascal cards, you know, like 1070s, 1080s, 1080 Ti's, because, well, quite rightly actually, the 20 series just didn't seem like a proper upgrade. But with the 3000 series, this could be the perfect time to upgrade. But what exactly makes these new cards so much better? Well, before we even talk about the specs, the design of these new founders cards, which is pretty much what we expected from the leaks, is a huge upgrade. The new fan design pulls in cold air from the bottom, passes through the PCB, and then pushes the hot air out the top. So we get 55% better airflow, and Nvidia say the 3080 is actually three times quieter, and also 20 degrees cooler than the Turing design on the 2080. Although that's not to say that these new cars will be 20 degrees cooler in real life. Really, I think it's just gonna give Nvidia more headroom to get extra performance out of them, uh, because really they're just talking about relative thermal design between the different architectures, the different designs. So I wouldn't expect the 3080 to be necessarily 20 degrees cooler than my 2080, but uh, that's something obviously we'll have to test in real life and also then uh, see how they overclock. That's gonna be pretty interesting as well. So it's the combination of the better cooling, the extra power draw, and of course the new Ampere architecture that's giving us this huge leap in performance. Now I don't want to bore you to death with all the Ampere details in this video, although do let me know if you guys would like to see a deep dive about it. But these new cards are based on a new 8 nanometer process, which is down from 14 on Turing, so they can cram in more transistors and it's much more efficient. Plus the new cards use PCIe 4, although you need a motherboard that supports it to get the full benefit, and all new faster GDDR6X memory on the 3090 and the 3080, and slightly slower but still improved GDDR6 memory on the 3070. So Nvidia are throwing out some pretty wild performance claims, but they do also say that uh, the biggest boost to performance will be uh, in games that are optimized for ray tracing and DLSS. So a big question will be, what kind of performance increase are we gonna see with you know, traditional rasterized games? Again, that's something I'll test myself in my full review. Having said that, I think we'll see ray tracing and the AI upscaling with DLSS become much more widespread with the likes of Cyberpunk, Fortnite, Dying Light 2, and the new Call of Duty Cold War fully supporting RTX. And also, given how genuinely incredible DLSS 2 can be, I made a video recently that showed how it can often double your performance. I'm really excited for what these cars will be able to do with this tech. Speaking of performance, my friends over at Digital Foundry got a bit of a cheeky exclusive. I'm definitely not jealous at all. <laughs> so I'd recommend checking out their video after this for more details. 
Another big upgrade, which Nvidia didn't really spend that much time on, is that these new cards will come with an HDMI 2.1 port. This is actually a really big deal, as it supports 48 gigabytes per second bandwidth. That's up from 18 on HDMI 2, and even 32.4 we get with DisplayPort 1.4. So a new generation of monitors are just starting to come out and also higher end 2019 and 2020 TVs already support 2.1, which means you can get 4K at 120 or even 8K at 60. So it's pretty impressive stuff, but I do still have a few questions like, what are they gonna be like to overclock? How well will they support SLI? And also how much cheaper will these new cards make the current 2000 series of cards? And of course, we'll have to see what AMD can come up with. Will their new big Navi cards compete with the 3080? And also, you know, will it be better value for money? So that's something we'll have to wait and see. But the big question, the biggest question is not can it play Crisis, but can it play Microsoft Flight Sim 2020? That's the new benchmark. And it's something I will be testing myself when I get the cards in for review. So the RTX 3080 comes out September 17th, and a week later for the 3090, and then sometime in October for the 3070. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy one of the new cards, or maybe even get a cheaper 20 series? Let me know in the comments below. And also stay tuned for my full review, buying guide, uh, 8K video test, all that good stuff. So make sure you've hit that little subscribe button below, and also uh, ding that notification bell, all the YouTuber cliches so that you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.